Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and yes, I'm wearing a brand new Gardens of the Galaxy t-shirt that I just bought uh, during Black Friday when I went to JCPenney, and it's a very nice shirt that I got, and I really love it, <laughs> looked really good on me too, but that's not too important right now, because I'm going to review another Christmas movie, and this movie is celebrating its 30th anniversary. It came out on November 23rd, 1988, and it's a hilarious take on A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens called Scrooged. Yes, with Bill Murray playing a selfish, conniving, uh, mean, nasty uh, television executive who suddenly gets visited by Free Ghost. Yes, free ghost. Uh, starting with um, his old boss, which he was visited by by the ghost of Christmas Pass, who's a mechanical New York cab driver, a present-day fairy who just loves to do all this slapstick humor and and platfalls, and of course, a seven-foot headless messenger which you can actually get to see uh, basically like a, a TV monitor on his face but then inside you see all these free uh, dead corpse inside <laughs> that's just moving around very creepy so this is sort of like um, a take on um, Bill Murray's character Peter Bakeman in Ghostbusters so it, they're just so this movie was uh, marketed that way at the time and I should remember that <laughs> and as far as I'm concerned yes I actually did saw this in theaters I think because I was only three years old at the time when it came out yeah 1988 and I love this movie ever since I even saw it when we rented this on home video uh, during Christmas when it was released on back in 1989 and I was watching it while I had all my Christmas gifts you know like like the NES system and the Mega Blocks yeah same goes with my brother Jason yeah so we were with the family you know we're just having fun while watching the movie Scrooge <laughs> yeah this movie never gets old I mean it's just fun it's hilarious. Uh, I mean, it has a great cast right there. I mean, you get a lot of celebrity cameos joining in. And it really works. Now, unfortunately, this DVD is bare bones. Uh, yeah, they actually use an updated cover art of the original movie poster. As you can see, because this is actually the old DVD from 1999, right here. And, of course, I replaced the case. It used to be on an Eagle Boss case, but not anymore. So I just bought one of those uh, those clear, um, sturdy uh, DVD cases, so that way this case will hold better for, for this film. Yeah, because it really deserved that. There is a Blu-ray release, but like the DVD, it's also bare bones. Yeah, just the trailer included. Same here. So, there you go. <laughs> Uh, in fact, um, back in 2006, they were going to have a special edition, which actually were going to use the same cover art as this, where they just uh, had the You'll Love It edition, yeah, which is nicknamed after the, the promo for IBC, You'll Love It. <laughs> um, yes, um, and here's a list. Uh, that I just found out on IGN, yeah, which was uh, mentioned back in 2006. Um, yes, the movie was going to be enhanced by 16 by 9 TVs and widescreen. It was going to have Dolby Digital English 5.1 surround, along with English 2.0 surround and French 2.0 surround, just like the previous DVD. They were going to add, of course, subtitles, once again, the old DVD. But they're going to add the commentary by director Richard Donner. 
Yes, the same director who gave us Lethal Weapon, as well as uh, The Goonies and Lady Hawk. Uh, they were also going to add um, a few uh, featurettes, such as Christmas to Remember, Updating Ebenezer, Bringing the Ghost to Life, and The Look of Scrooge. Plus, on the set with Bill Murray that, that has two parts, a show West message from Bill Murray, and the trailer. So that was it. But, unfortunately, it was never released. Not at all. <clears throat> Paramount literally dropped this release, mostly because I guess Bill Murray just couldn't uh, do it. I mean, mostly because he did have a fight with Richard Donner, he couldn't get along with. And I guess they were having problems during, you know, the setting of the movie. Seeing that this movie was only shot for three months in Hollywood, at this rate, the Paramount Studio. And on top of that, and, wow, you, you wouldn't believe this. Uh, yes, um... There were, uh, I think there were a lot of uh, conflicting um, problems here when they were doing the movie where, uh, yes, uh, Bill Murray, of course, was, was getting hurt all the time from Carol Kane because that was just part of the, the character. That, I guess, it, I mean, with all those physical stunts that she was doing, it actually hurt uh, uh, Murray's lip. Like, it almost ripped it apart a bit. And, so I, I guess, yeah, he was, I think he, he didn't like the fact that he was getting hurt. Uh, so he did actually had a lot of pain. Also the fact that when this movie came out, it did got mixed reviews from critics. But it's mostly positive. But just... A bit mixed. I mean, Roger Ebert, of course, was one of the critics who gave it a negative review. And I'm sorry, but this is why I totally disagree with him. I just feel like, you know, he was way too hard on this film. He really is. I mean, yes, that's the whole point of the film. It's supposed to be mean-spirited and, and all that. But in a way, that's the, the idea of the character. It was that, yes, uh, Scrooge was a mean-spirited guy. But then he changes his ways. After being visited by free ghosts. So we get the whole point. And yes, of course, there have been so many adaptations of A Christmas Carol. I mean, there's been a whole lot of them. But I gotta say, out of all these adaptations that we got, my favorite, of course, is the one with uh, Albert Finney that came out in 1970, simply called Scrooge. Then we got the Muppet Christmas Carol with Michael Caine playing Ebenezer Scrooge. And of course, Scrooge <laughs> with Bill Murray. Not to mention um, the one with Alan Young uh, doing the voice of Scrooge in Mickey's Christmas Carol. I also love that one too. That's another favorite. I mean, mostly because, well, Alan Young would later become Scrooge McDuck in DuckTales. Yeah. Ah, wow. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was a shame though. I, You know, if if your Love It edition um, was released back then, we would have had a Blu-ray release with that same edition. And I bet the transfer would have been even more solid than ever before. Even remastered too. Uh, for this time, so, and I don't have the Blu-ray though, but of course they did release the the Blu-ray once again, re-releasing it this time with a DVD and a digital copy. But you're just getting the same transfer as usual. So what can you do? Uh, yeah, disappointing. Um, surprisingly, the film was uh, the highest-grossing film ever by its 32 million budget. Uh, it actually made uh, $60.3 million. I mean, at the time, it was a, a successful moderate hit, but not as much as, as it could be, but still. And 
And it has a wonderful score by Danny Elfman because he's been known for doing a lot of great scores. I love that. It, it really fits the tone. And you also got two screenwriters who work with Bill Murray. Um, yeah, Mitch Glazer and Michael Donahue. Yeah, for Saturday Night Live veterans. And not only that, but Bill Murray actually got his three brothers in it. He got John Murray, who plays his brother. He got uh, Joe Murray, who's a party guest. Actually looks exactly like John, right there. He does have some of the humor like Bill, uh, like Bill does. And of course, uh, Brian Dahl Murray as his father. Even though he's his older brother <laughs> in, in the movie. Um, and I always thought um, Murray and uh, and Karen Allen, you know, from Raiders of the Lost Ark and The Sandlot, I mean, definitely had terrific chemistry, in my opinion, with uh, together. I mean, at times, you know, it's like an on and off relationship here, but in the end, he changes his ways. So, so uh, let's get to the review. It stars Bill Murray, Karen Allen, uh, John Forstiff, yes, who's been known for doing uh, all these other shows. I, I, in fact, I think he was known for doing the voice of Charlie in Charlie's Angels. Yes, that's him. John Glover from the movie 52 Pickup and Gremlins 2, the new batch. Yeah, that was him. Uh, Alfred Woodard, who went on to do uh, films like Star Trek First Contact, uh, among others, uh, even uh, Passion Fish, uh, Bobcat Goldthwait, yes, the stand-up comedian who was in uh, a lot of stuff, and yeah, of course he went on to direct movies too, because yes, he was in the Police Academy films, he was in One Crazy Summer, uh, he was in Burglar with Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah, David Johansson, you know, who's a uh, a musician. Where he did uh, Buster Point Dexter, <laughs> of course. There's even a Christmas song he did called "Is That You, Santa Claus?" And um, he he was also um, in the movie "Tales from the Dark Side," the movie. Yeah, who became. Uh, who was a killer that was hired to the job to kill the, the black cat. Yeah, that's him. Carol Kane from the TV show Taxi. Yeah. And she's been in other stuff too, uh, including uh, the Adams Family movies. Yeah. Nicholas Phillips. Uh, Robert Mitchum. Yes, Robert Mitchum from Cape Fear, both original and remake. Uh, Michael J. Pollard. Uh, Mary Ellen Trainer from Lethal Weapon, as well as the Goonies and even the Monster Squad. Yeah, Mabel Kane from the TV show What's Happening. Uh, John Murray. Winnie Malik, yes, Winnie Malik, who went on to do the TV series uh, Dream On with Brian uh, Bimben and, of course, Just Shoot Me. Uh, Brian Dole Murray, with numbers of cameos by Lee Majors, yes, Lee Majors, the, the Six Dollar Man, and the Fall Guy, Miles Davis, Paul Schaffer, yes, Paul Schaffer from uh, Late Night with David Letterman, David uh, Sanborn, John Hausman, Robert Goulet, yes, Robert Goulet, the Solid Gold Dancers, yes, if you remember the TV shows. That, that lasted uh, from 1980 until 1988. Sadly, this was the final appearance of them. And yes, they were incredibly hot. Uh, but for those who don't know, Solid Gold is a, was a very popular um, music television series um, in the 80s. Uh, it did air it on Channel 13 in Los Angeles, yeah, KCOP. I think I've seen the show. Um, I know I saw clips of it too. 
Uh, Buddy Hackett, yeah, legendary comedian. Yeah. Uh, Mary Lou Retton, yes. Um, Olympic gymnast. Uh, Jamie Farr from the TV show MASH. Larry Colton. And Ann Ramsey, who sadly she passed away after this movie came out. And this was her last film, too. Even her husband, uh, Logan Ramsey, joined in. Yes, and that's the same actress who was in the movie The Goonies, once again. And, of course, she was in For a Mama from the Train and Deadly Friend. It's written by Mitch Glazer and Michael O'Donohue, and it's directed by Richard Donner. The movie begins where we meet an IBC television president named Frank Cross, who's played by Bill Murray, who's actually pushing his company to broadcast a live production of A Christmas Carol, simply called Scrooge, uh, making all the staff work work throughout the entire holiday. Of course, they were watching promos of all these uh, Christmas specials and TV shows that are being played, like for example, the Night the Reindeer Died with Lee Majors. <laughs> That's really awesome. I mean, this would have been an awesome movie to watch. Yeah. Imagine that. And then they had the, uh, the Cajun Christmas with Robert Goulet. And then there's that, uh, <laughs> that Leave it to Beaver special. That was pretty funny. Uh, then next, of course, they showed a live production of Scrooge. And that is until... <laughs> He decided to come up with his own sadistic uh, promo, where which is actually one of the funniest uh, promos that he ever did, <laughs> which actually worked so well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and because of that, um, Elliot uh, Loudermilk, who's played by Bobcat Goldthwait, uh, disagrees with him about showing that promo. And because because of that, Frank fires him. It kicks him out, which led to a running gag where, you know, he's just going around. A, you know, he lost everything. Now he's just getting like a bottle of liquor, but then the cab driver just uh, just drive by, and all this uh, all this water started splashing on him, and 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 then he drops the bottle. Uh, then he tries to have another one, and then that's been taken away by the Ghost of Christmas Pass. Then he was about to give blood just so he can get more money, but yes, he faints <laughs> into the bag of garbage while a <laughs> while a homeless person suddenly takes his jacket. So there you go. But there's also another runny gag where uh, you get a um, you get a lady who's uh, working behind the production. And he's getting uh, knocked unconscious by uh, by a light pole. Yeah, you know, she's already have a broken nose and a cracked neck, <laughs> and and she's getting all <laughs> and all these sets are starting to fall on her too. <laughs> she, yeah, she's getting all the <laughs> the bad luck here. <laughs> yeah, she was the one who was telling uh, Frank that. That the one of the solid gold dancers is showing more cleavage, <laughs> but he was just telling them, "No, we should have more cleavage." I mean, everyone wants to see it. <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, he has an assistant uh, named Grace, who's played by Alfred Woodard. Who's about to uh, send him gifts, which turn out to be IBC monogram towels for everyone, including his brother. But they were also going to send them BCRs or any other gifts. But well, it seems to me that Grace suddenly uh, misplaced the towel for a BCR for his brother. So now he doesn't have to worry about that. <laughs> Uh, but that's actually how it happened um, yeah, during the scene with uh, the Ghost of Christmas uh, present. Yeah, I'm just getting ahead of myself here. Um, so Frank's boss, Preston Wildlander, who's played by Robert Mitchum, 
It's been seen the stress that Frank has been going under uh, within the production that, that he was dealing with. Uh, in, yeah, he's, he's also a humanitarian, so he went to a... Uh, he was given a speech at the award, but then he forgot his uh, award. He left it in the, the taxi cab. Then once he was inside the, the building, you know, going inside his office, that's when he meets uh, the ghost of his mentor, Lou Hayward, who's played by John Forstyfe. And this is really interesting because he's like wearing a, a casual... Uh, all this casual clothes that he's wearing yeah it looks to me like he was it was basically one of his golf suits that he has and th there was actually a golf ball on the back of his head with a mice inside he also shot him too several times and just when he was about to get a drink <laughs> yeah we all know that classic bit in cartoons like whenever you get shot and you start getting a drink, it starts to spray all these gun holes all over you. Uh, but yeah, he, he died of a heart attack uh, seven years ago. But he was an unloved miser. He actually warns um, Frank that he's going to be visited by a freak ghost who will be appearing over the next day to help Frank uh, avoid the, the same fate that he's been going through. So yes, this is where he takes um, Frank all the way and just um, suddenly uh, pushes him all the way into um, the third story the building. And this is where he falls all the way down. Just when he was about to hang on with his hand, cracks and he fell all the way. And then it changes straight to his uh, chair. And that's when he gets a phone call by his um, his love interest a girlfriend named Claire Phillips is played by Karen Allen yeah which for 15 years ago um, Frank hasn't spoken to Claire ever since um, which we're gonna get to had to do with the fact that he was doing a TV show uh, back in the early 70s so Claire comes to the network to talk to Frank, but Frank basically never has much time for her. Uh, mostly because they're still working on the sets. Yes, uh, there's even a guy who was about to put in uh, the antlers on the mice. And then, yeah, there was a joke where he says, like, he tries to put some <laughs> glue or everything, just a stick. And he just says, have you tried staples? <laughs> but Claire is just saying, no, don't you dare! <laughs> You're gonna hurt this poor little fella. Anyway, uh, she does work at a homeless shelter. So he actually gave um, Frank a calling card so that way he'll be able to go all the way to, to talk to her. Which he, he does later on. And just when the rehearsal starts, that's when he was visited by the Ghosts of Christmas Pass. He has a New York cab driver who's played by David Johansson. So he takes Frank to see his past when he was a little kid, like four years old, at his old house, which is now being torn down. Uh, that's when uh, his father, played by Brian Del Murray, brings him a present, but it turned out to be a veal that they were going to have for dinner. So he's just spending time watching TV, you know, switching channels. And just, just before he went back to bed. Yeah, so I guess, you know, he was living in a poor house with, with his family. They're not getting along much. So it, it really sad. And then we get to the other, um, the later past when we grew up. I think he was like 17 or 18 at this point. And where he, he went on to, to have a Christmas party at the office. And yes, this is where he meets uh, that girl who's going around uh, <laughs> copying her panties. I, I, I love that. But yes, uh, he was going to have some Chinese food with her, but boy, did he make a mistake by rejecting her. 
But that's when he bumps into um, Clara. So this is where he first met. And it actually calls him Lumpy. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so as things went along, you know, things were going great for for Frank and Clara. So they were falling in love and they were together. You know, they were opening their gifts, uh, which one gift uh, turns out to be a book called the Kama Sultra. <laughs> So that was really sweet. Uh, all the way until he's like a few years later when he works at a at a TV show, yeah, a children's TV show called Frisbee the Dog. So he had to wear the suit and he was gonna go to a Christmas party on Christmas Eve, but sadly didn't get a chance because he was too busy working on that show. So he hasn't spoken to Claire ever since. So that sucks. And then we get to the next with the Ghost of Christmas Present. Yep, played by Carol Kane, who's just uh, going around doing all these slapstick platforms. You know, just kicks him in the nuts. You know, slaps him in the face. Yeah, whips his lip. And, and of course, you have all these bubbles in the background, too. <laughs> and yes, the fairy does have all of her wings, and she's flying around. And this is where it takes the Frank into the present, where... She went straight, where she just took him straight to uh, Grace's apartment, showing, showing that she actually has a family, a, a big family. Yes, she has um, three daughters and two brothers. And of course, has a grandmother and everyone. Unfortunately, um, the youngest brother had suddenly become a mute. He doesn't speak because um, after his father was murdered yeah, he, he hasn't been spoken ever since so they're trying to find a way to make him speak again so they have to take him to the doctor to see if this will help well we probably learned that by the end of the movie and yes there's even a scene where they even decorated him as a Christmas tree because unfortunately the family couldn't afford a Christmas tree yeah, because of how selfish Frank is so then, um, on top of that, um, she also later takes uh, Frank into um, his brother's house, you know, where he has a party guest around. He even has uh, his wife, uh, uh, his wife Wendy, who's played by Wendy Malick. <laughs> so they're they're just doing they're playing some of these uh, games, you know, like some trivia questions such as the Gilgan's Island and the Adams Family. On top of that, um, his brother got the gift. Uh, it was going to be a towel or shower curtain or whatever. But then, yes, it turns out to be the BCR from Pioneer. <laughs> so he got that. So it was a mixed up. So then, um, after that, uh, yes, <laughs> she, she punches Frank and wants up uh, inside the... Uh, in a freezing sidewalk where he spotted uh, the homeless guy who actually has a gold watch all frozen solid and then he wants up going straight into the boarding uh, boarding door and that's where it goes straight into the set yes hard to believe he actually went straight into the setting of the Christmas Carol yeah, Scrooge to make matters worse um, Elliot suddenly uh, came by with a shotgun and winds up shooting Frank everywhere just before the Ghost of Christmas Future awaits, which just came straight from the TV, ready to grab uh, uh, Frank yeah, while he was having a drink and he was just opening a present of, of a picture of him and his brother when they were very young. Yeah, it was a nice gift. So yes, uh, Elliot started to shoot him. He actually shot off uh, his uh, his Emmy Awards and everything else until he finally go, goes straight into the elevator and that's when he meets the, the Ghost of Christmas Future. Yeah, which he actually had a monitor on his head so you get to see him with all the reflections. And then inside you see all these uh, free corpses in there all moving inside his, uh, his gut. 
<laughs> that was just hilarious. And that's where we saw um, the glimpse of, of Claire, who now changes her way, now becoming incredibly nasty, just like how Frank is. She's, she's now becoming rich. And she she's uh, just telling the, the kids from outside to, to go away. And, to, and afterwards, the cremation of Frank Cross. That's where he spotted his brother and, and his wife, Wendy. Uh, they're all dressed in black and they're ready to uh, cremate uh, Frank inside the coffin until he was finally woken up out of the, uh, the elevator. And what do you know, he finally uh, changed. Yeah, just like Ebenezer Scrooge changed. <laughs> so he's like, he's doing uh, Elliot a favor by actually giving him a raise and all this other stuff and then tries to uh, held at gunpoint at the um, all the way inside the IBC control room you know where they always do all these electrical controls yeah you know, with all these monitors around and it definitely shows uh, what they have to put you know, to, like for example they put in the commercial and they put a take and all that yeah, I mean, I used to work on the electrical rooms, and yeah, when I was taking a uh, a TV studio class uh, at PCC. But enough of that. This is where Frank finally gives his speech at the end, a very uh, heartwarming speech. So now he changes his ways here and there, and <laughs> so on and so forth. And then at that point on, um, Calvin. The little boy had finally spoke and this is where he says the line that Tiny Tim has said which actually was said by Mary Lou Wetton as we all know God bless us everyone <laughs> and then the entire cast sang the song put a little love in your heart which would later be um, they had a redemption with uh, Annie Lennox and Al Green uh, at, at the end credits of the movie. And yeah, I just I just love that, that moment. Definitely a hilarious comedy and the perfect Christmas movie to watch, especially when it's on TV or just buy the DVD and Blu-ray by any chance. I mean, I, I had fun with this movie. It definitely plays it exactly like how Ghostbusters would have been. Like if, if Peter Bankman was the boss of a television executive. I mean, this really works, but it makes you wonder, where's uh, Dan Aykroyd, uh, Ernie Hudson, and Harold Ramis when you need them? <laughs> exactly. I, I love the cast. Uh, again, I, I thought Karen Allen was sweet uh, with that freckle face of hers. I mean, she has that lovely smile. I mean, it I mean, she was quite different compared to her uh, her Marion character in Raiders of the Lost Dark, and then later Indiana Jones in the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull come to mind. But nevertheless, uh, I always thought she was beautiful, um, and I just loved the chemistry with with Bill Murray. Yeah, you know, when when he was in his nice side instead of being his nasty side. <laughs> Of course, Bill Murray was hilarious in the movie where, you know, he just plays a sadistic guy, nasty, mean-spirited, but then he changes his ways at the end. But I, I just love his uh, hilarious humor that just really works. I mean, this is why I love the actor so much. I mean, he, he was just having fun, even though I kind of wish he had um, offset. Um, but... Then you got David Johansson as the Ghost of Christmas Past. I mean, he was totally uh, insane in this movie, but hilarious. I, I just loved, uh, loved the way he acts like like all these other New York cab drivers out there. And he, and he does smoke the cigar, and all that smoke is going straight to his ears. That was cool. And his meter suddenly uh, take it, and his uh, meter actually starts to change like it's like a time traveling type. <laughs> uh, I even love the moment where the car actually goes straight into uh, 
the the truck. So it's because of course he's a ghost, so he can go all the way straight in at him. He can even go straight into the door and just makes that that funny bit. But of course Frank just couldn't get in because <laughs> he's not a ghost. Um, uh, Carol Kane was also hilarious uh, as the ghost of Christmas present, just going around doing all these slapstick uh, humor. And it was also cool to have the uh, the ghost of Christmas future. Yeah, I, I love how they created that. So. And it did have a lot of practical effects that they used too. And they they even did it by using Dream uh, uh, Dream Quest images. So they they did the visual effects of all the the scenes and 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 how the way and how everything moves and the way they they use all the makeup job to actually create all these characters. I thought it really works. Um, I love the cameos that they got. Um, I love all the actors that they joined. I mean, Alfred Woodard was also very good as, as Grace. His assistant sort of like, uh, um, just like Cratchit, but by going for a female, um, but going for a gender change. Plus she's black. And the fact that Calvin is basically Tiny Tim, but now she... But he's a mute, but until he starts to speak again at, at the end of uh, Frank's speech. Um, Robert Mitchum was good, too, and so was um, John Glover. Uh, along with Mary Ellen Trainer, Abel Kane, and... And also the married brothers, yeah, Joe, John, and Brian Dole. <laughs> I also love the speech that he gave. Uh, even at the end of the movie, just as the credits was about to roll, was when he started to bring in the a big nod to Little Shop of Horrors, because of course he was in the movie as a cameo of, of a dentist patient. This is where he says, "Feed me, Seymour." At, at the end. Uh, that was a great nod. It's a fun film. It, it's hilarious. Uh, again, it's crazy, slice spreading, as one put it out, but it's a movie that just never gets old. And I would watch this every time, even on Christmas. And this movie does deserve a lot of respect. It really does. Even if it's just another modern day adaptation of. A Christmas Carol. This really works. Right here. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's Scrooge, and I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.